you what's going on y'all it's j Smo reviews here back at it again with another video man bringing you guys my final predictions here before we hit the big weekend possibly the most hyped up event of 2024 these are my predictions for bags and bodies power moves uh obviously humongous card you probably heard about every matchup five times over i know i've talked about it uh did a show on threes channel with him and uh lang i always love being over there had some dialogue about it but these are my my final predictions with the full card now uh now out um excited is an understatement i will be attending this event in person which in person battle rap always more positive and, and electric than any version of battle rap i think you know battle rap is electric as is but if you've never been to an event in person especially a bigger scale event um i definitely recommend it i'm expecting big things from the weekend i probably will have the recap out um either that night probably not the morning after i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm gonna tell you right now i'm not gonna have my mic with me i'm not gonna have it uh, production wise i'd like so expect a little bit of dip in quality for the next blog but obviously we'll have my thoughts you know fresh out of the building when i give that recap on um, but without further ado man let's get right into the battles so uh first battle to talk about is the grudge match of the card the most genuine grudge match of the card and that is snake eyes versus j2 these gentlemen do not like each other no they do not and i, I think that they always probably not like each other, but then particularly you go to the Bags and Bodies history, obviously both of them being a part of Hitman's show, living in the house, and that's really where the rivalry kicks up from, for those that don't know. Uh, I'm sure there's all types of interactions and reasonings in the house that, that Snake Eyes and J2 don't like each other, but particularly that Rock Lee situation, uh, which I don't think was ended up being what it was all played out to be, right? But J2 was super vocal around that time, and that's when you really get these guys going at each other. It was like every day and now you get the battle and in terms of who i have winning the battle um i'm gonna keep the same prediction i've had pretty much since the start and even probably a little more confident in it i have snake eyes 2-1 clear and I, the one thing for j2 if you want to debate he'll win and something I, I won't really debate is that he is a better puncher bar for bar rapper strictly wordplay pen wise i think that he can go to a higher level than snake not an elite level per se. I don't think that like J2 is like one of the best punchers or anything, but I think he's solid. I mean, that's the basis of his game and what got him here. Um, but the, the two big uh, defining factors for why I'm giving it to Snake is A, I think he's just all around a better battle rapper, you know, aggression wise, delivery wise, pure rapping ability. Sometimes the dissection of an angle, I don't think either of them have really like shown themselves to be great anglers per se, but I do think Snake can do it a little bit better. And then also the experience in front of this amount of people, because we are talking what's supposed to be like 800 to 1,000 people uh, for this event possibly, which I think would be the biggest event person, like count-wise that we've seen this year. And that's tough, man. Crowd control gets tougher. It gets tougher to just wrap straight through your material where... It could be 800 people and it could only be like 10 people making noise in the crowd. That's enough to make you have to reset your rhyme. There's just a lot of things that come with that. I think Snake is more war tested. He's better prepared. And in a year where both of them have been like active, it's almost like similar type of years where, you know, some top tier opponents both mostly lost those top tier opponents, but there's 50 50 results winning at a mid tier level as well. I always give Snake Eyes hell uh, for not winning battles, but this year, uh, the Riggs battle, you could debate the True Foe battle. I know I'm probably missing one or two more. I personally had him losing to K Walker, some had that as debatable, um, but I, I think this files into the winning side for him again. And I also think with Stumbles backing out of the boxing match, it's kind of funny where I don't think it gives him like a boost or anything per se, even though I think it, it technically is kind of a good look for Snake, right? Because he did show up to fight. He was ready to go. Obviously, kind of, you know, funny ass uh, post, I can't even say post fight interview, but he cut an interview once the back out happened. But this is going to be a messy battle. J2 is going to talk about the fights in the Bags and Bodies house. He's going to talk about the Rock Lee situation, all this stuff. I think the fights is going to be a huge part of the angling J2 pulls off. And with Snake just showing up for a fight, but someone backing out on him particularly someone that we've been wanting to kind of see them fight let's just call it what it is uh I, I think that that might damper a little bit of that approach from j2 so is it possible for j2 to win of course like i said bar for bar he's a bit better he, it's gonna be in atlanta which i believe he lives there he's probably gonna have some of his peoples in the building uh but i just think snake is, is just better all around equipped for this particular matchup and then from there the next four is obviously all top tier action and we'll talk about av versus a ward and something I like about this card is that you're catching, there's two battles that are specifically like this, but you're taking battlers who are doing fantastic right now, like in form, Av, one of the top three battle rappers, objectively, you know, probably higher than that depending on who you talk to, but at the very least, he's a top three battle rapper of 2024, Award at the very least, a top 10 battle rapper of 2024, so you probably have two of the 10 best active within this year going at it, uh, 
what more could you ask for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Both have the ability to be explosive in front of people. You can go and watch battles, even though he's a puncher, and I know how people get, you know, they just automatically think punchers probably do a little bit lesser on the big stage, but I'll say what I've been saying is that Av on a big stage, it's been more rare that he's been up there, but he's damn near better in there than he is in the small rooms, bro. His Danny performance, explosive. His Arsenal performance, explosive. Um, God, I know I'm forgetting one more recent battle that's on the big stage, but it, those two alone are great examples. Plus, Av has more, you know, high level work up there on the bigger stages. Then you look at A Ward, it's really the same type of thing. Obviously, you, you might look recently at kind of his A Ward battle, his rock battle, his signs of him doing great, but he won moment of the year last year and almost performance of the year off of what he did to Vixen in front of a thousand people in New York. So both are capable they're both all around talents and they're both uh, pretty much at the peak of their powers right now so it's a complete pick em. i'm not gonna act like there's one defining factor that's gonna make me go one way or the other i'm simply gonna go with av to one edge because i think he's just did it at a little bit of a higher level and it could be even preferential when you say that but i mean look at how good he's been in 2024 this is one of his biggest and toughest fights he knows that he's spoken about that leading up to the matchup so i'm expecting both of them at 100 and I just don't know if I'm if I'm gonna go against Av at 100. So very capable for Eight Ward to win. I'm, I think this battle is gonna be debatable. But for picking a winner, like I said, coin flip type of pick. But betting against Av hasn't worked yet for anyone that has, and I'm not planning on doing that for this one. So I do have him winning the battle. And now following up A Ward and Av, we have the battle that is my battle of the night pick. It's the battle I want to be the battle of the night more than anything, and one that for me, even though there's bigger matchups on the card, this is the one that I'm looking forward to most, and that is T-Rex versus Swamp, a very similar to Av and Ward. They're both in like perfect form coming into this battle. I mean, Swamp, just like any other great 2024 you're talking about, he's doing it, but he's doing it slightly different. It's not 10 battles. It's not 12 battles. He's going to probably end up with six battles by the year's end, but you got your Verb battle, which was a huge milestone grudge match for him. Calico battle coming up after this. T-Rex, he's already got Miss Hustle, 40 bars. I think I'm missing one more battle in there as well. Uh, Swamp has been fantastic. And then the resurgence of Rex. I mean, I don't got to tell you about that. If you watch the channel, you know that Rex has been on fire. And this is really going back to last year where I thought the results could be a little bit more mixed. But so far, he's 2-0, clear victories, and he's performance of the night on both cards he's been on. One of them was Mass 6, which was event of the year, and he was easily performer of day one and one of the top three to four takeaways of the weekend. So Rex has been, every step he's made has been extremely impactful. I think the one thing you have to worry about on Rex's side, because uh, and to worry about less because he has such a volume of battles, right? But I was worried about that going to the bad news battle. And even though everyone would agree, that's probably 70 or 80% Rex, that was still explosive. So I'm expecting, because Swamp is a better opponent, he's a higher profile opponent, and I think Rex knows that he's the biggest challenge he's going to have this year. I'm expecting, hopefully, Rex to bring the best version of himself. I'm just hoping that he doesn't have to kind of strain himself too thin, you know, with having to give material for clean and that battle coming up, you know, maybe another, he's kind of hinted he might have another battle. So it's tougher when you have that type of volume, but he's a legend that's been battling at a legendary level. So it's, I'm not too, too worried. And then, like I said, Swamp has been absolutely fantastic. There has been no better time to book this battle. And for anyone that's seen, I think I did my Swamp book. And that might've been over a year ago when I did that. I have been asking for this battle forever because both of them have a style that you can't necessarily categorize and they just talk a bunch of real shit. They're going to talk to each other. I believe they already said the second round is going to be straight drug bars from both. But even while that's fantastic, first of all, that is fantastic. We can't wait to see that content from them. I think both of them, even outside of the drug talk, just straight real talk, sometimes breaking down the opponent, not even... Uh, so much as like a regular battle rap be based angle, but kind of questioning their character, uh, the difference in principles. They get into stuff like that. And I love that talk because I feel like there's not a lot of people to do it. You take the swamps, the rexes, you know, the cows and the reeds at once upon a time with reed, you know, they all do that at a high level. And I'm expecting both of them to be super motivated, which is why I'm expecting this to be battle tonight. But in terms of my winner, I am going with swamp and it's so hard because how do you bet against Rex considering what he's been doing lately? But my thing is Swamp's doing it, but he's doing it in legacy matches. And seeing the way that he treated that verb battle, seeing the way going back that he treated that Tay Rock battle. And last year, the biggest opponent he got was Chef Trez. And I mean, it's not the same legacy level as those battles, but 
That was his biggest opponent out of four matches, and that was one of the best battles of the year. He's just a big moment type of guy. Didn't start like that for Schmoke. We remember the T-top battles. We remember the chokes and stumbles on his way up, but while he could still have the occasional fuck up, you haven't really seen that this year. I definitely don't think you see that in this battle. And if he's going to keep winning legacy matches, why would I bet against that either? So another one like Av and, uh, Av and Ward, I could see it being a pick em. But then on top of that, you add more people in the room. And while Rex was good at endgame, I haven't seen Rex in front of like 500 plus yet uh, outside of the chess battle. We saw how that was starting on homecoming. So bigger crowd, another thing you have to worry about a little bit with Rex. Um, so with, with those indicators, I have to kind of go with swamp on this one but like I, you can hear the way I'm talking about it I'm expecting the absolute most of the battle and then before we get into Gichi Gotti versus Hitman Hollow which is a whole conversation in its own gotta talk about Big K versus Twerk and even though it's probably the least promoted of the battles here I, I that's just the nature of them I still think people are extremely looking forward to this one being that it is the number one and number two from champion of the year last year which we've never seen after the awards been given out I know Chilla and K-Shine battled techn- you know the year after Chilla won it, but they hadn't announced the award yet. This is the first time the award's been announced. Then they took the winner and the runner-up, put them in a matchup together, and obviously came down the fan vote. The fan vote went for Twerk. He would have been our champion of the year last year, so it's that close, which is why you need the battle for this one. And um, I, it's the toughest for me to call. If it's if Battle of the Night is not Rex and Swamp, I do believe it's going to be Big K versus New Jersey Twerk, and it's because of just how different their styles are. Now, obviously, at the base level, they're both punchers, right? So, like, there is that similarity, but even that, they don't do the same. I think Big K is more of, like, a rapping ability, you know, momentum puncher. It builds up as it goes, and then the haymaker starts to go in, you know, come in faster and faster. As opposed to Twerk, who I think is more of a, a build up and bomb, build up and bomb type of guy. I'm not saying that that's all either of them do, but I'm just saying even punching wise, there's a little bit of a difference of how they find success. And then you have the fact that Twerk is this world class, probably best in the world right now performer, at least until Surf gets out explosive, dynamite, electricity. What he does in bigger rooms um, is really the strength of his style. And then you have Big K, who in my opinion is the best angler in the world right now. He's just too surgical. He's really good at coming up with creative new approaches to go with someone, but he'll also take a base level, you know, I felt like versus Rock is a great example. He, we knew he was going to talk about URL, right? He had that URL angle in the third, kind of to raise the platform, that whole scheme. Incredible. We saw it coming, but he's, he's just the best to do that type of angle that we see still see coming. But he also had the wrestling angle in the second. Art imitates life. You're obsessed with fake fights. Extremely creative way of going about the wrestling angle versus rock. I don't think someone else would have taken that approach. So you have that surgical, more strategic factor versus like the bulldozer, more like destructive factor. So that's what makes it so hard to call. If you prefer either of those styles, your ear is going to be, you know, your ear is going to judge more kindly to the type of style that you like. So I think it's super duper 50 50. Uh, I obviously predicted K versus Rock, and even though I had Rock 2 1 Edge, that battle ages very well for K, and that was with a lot of odds stacked against him. So it makes it very hard for me to pick against him. I didn't pick against him in that battle, right? So it makes it hard for me to pick against him again here. But the one big difference, kind of something we talked about earlier uh, to a lesser extent with Snake Eyes and J2. It's the difference in how much these guys have been in front of a thousand people. Say what you want about Twerk, he's been in front of 800 to a thousand people, damn near 800 to a thousand times, it feels like. There's good, there's bad, there's all time good, there's all time bad, but there's so much experience. And clearly, that's when we talk about high level performers, we know that bigger stage is more of an advantage Twerk. More people in the room is more advantage Twerk. And as great as Big K is, I think he's a top 25, maybe a top 20 battle rapper of all time in his own right. He has not been in front of like a thousand people or on big stages that often. It's not that he hasn't had big matchups. It's just, you know, being an RBE, they didn't throw a lot of huge events uh, until Max Out. And he was on Max Out 1 and 2 in front of, you know, tons of people. But he battled X Factor and he battled Clone on, uh, on late prep. And he beat both of them clear. This is not X Factor, and this is not clone on late prep. You know what I'm saying? This is about as difficult as it's going to get multiple months prep versus debatably the best big stage performer that we have out right now. And just for that, you know, can a Blue Room K performance, can a K versus Tay Rock performance win versus Twerk? It won't guarantee, but yes, it can. Like, that's the level he has to be at. I just haven't seen him be that amazing in front of a thousand people because he just hasn't had that many shots at it so I wouldn't necessarily say it would shock me but it would be the first time that he's faced another top tier real competitor like that in this big of a situation 
and was that great on the big stage. So I'm going to have to see that. But until then, I'm going to have to go with the performance heavy guy in the performance heavy setting. And I am taking twerk to one edge. Uh, but if this, if Rex and Swamp isn't battle the night, like I predicted, I think 100% this will be my second pick for it. Now we got Geechee versus Hitman. It's a match that's been talked to death. So I'm not going to talk your ear off with it. Right. And I've, I want to do a keys to victory on this one, uh, video, but I am a little pressed for time. I got my flight tomorrow. If the video is out early tomorrow, you get it. I, it's the one I want to put out. If you do not see the keys to victory uh, for this matchup out early tomorrow, you're just not going to get in. We're going to watch the event, right? Um, but I just think style-wise, there is a lot of things that one is great. One has the edge on, but then the other has an edge on. I think Geechee is definitely a better puncher, right? On the flip side, I think Hitman is a better rapper. You know, flow, syllable structure, he's just better at that. Geechee, even though both of them are very good at this, I think Geechee is a better angler. I mean, he's up there in that big K conversation for best anglers in battle rap right now. However, obviously, Hitman has him on the performance side, the explosiveness on a big stage. So they it's almost like they don't match up at the same thing at all, but they match up evenly, right? So what's going to be that separating factor? And for a long time, I had Hitman 2-1 just for my belief in him in these type of situations, but I think I've underrated my belief for Geechee in these situations. Listen, he stumbled a lot this year. He even stumbled a lot last year and in 2022, right? So you look at this year, Loso, Fonz, Marv 1, not a great version of himself. What's the biggest battle he had besides Hitman Hollow this year? Immaculate. It's the one other performance he was completely clean and very, very good. I had him clearly winning. You go back to last year, he took his bumps and bruises again. He had his stumbles throughout last year, but what's the biggest battle he had? Easy, the block captain, right? Mega match, super match, all eyes on him. Has a fantastic, one of the better performances of his career, right? So I just think, and you know, th this goes back to battles like the Loaded Lux battle in 2021, the Surf battle, and even if you have him losing, it's a huge battle, and it's like an instant classic with one of his best performances ever. When the lights are brightest, and he's not, he's not, it's not just when the lights are on, because sometimes the lights are on, God, he doesn't give a fuck, he'll still stumble, but when they're the brightest, he also, and even more emphatically, brings the best, most, like, impactful versions of himself to the battle, so that already had me kind of leaning Ichi 2-1 more so in the last week, I've had Hitman 2-1 all the way up until this, and then there's this kind of new angle I see growing, and I, I knew it wasn't affecting Hitman for a while, but I knew if he kept going back and forth with Verb, you see, you're bringing your energy down to someone that's lesser than you, right? I honestly would not even hear or know anything that's going on with Verb if I did not see Hitman acknowledging him. It feels like every single day. And if you keep going back and forth with someone that's doing something lame, that, that, could, that could rub off on you and you're going to end up getting caught up one way or another. And I feel like now there's this kind of gang angle, uh, gang angle forming, uh, obviously kind of stemming from... The, the video with WAC100, they had that whole chat room, Geechee, Hitman, questioning him about he's Pyru, right? I'm not going to get all the politics. What the fuck do I know about gang life? However, I know it's probably going to be an angle in the battle, and there's no one that you want less to have an angle that's based around gang-related stuff than Geechee Gotti. And I mean, there's a few other times. Snake Eyes, much lesser matchup, but cleaned him up. K-Shine battle, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you see a dude stuttering? He, that's because he fake blood, he food coloring. He just knows how to flip, I think, that specific subject matter very well on his opponent. And on top of that, you're already going to see elements of real talk, talk to him, kind of surgical rap from Geechee. And I just think it is like the worst type of door to open before the battle and give Geechee, you know, another approach or attack that he can take. So I had Hitman 2-1 for a very long time. I still have this battle being pretty debatable, pretty close the day of. However, I am going Geechee Gotti 2-1 going into the battle. He seems very confident. Like I said, these are the types of matchups that he's lived for, that he's made a big part of his legacy off of, and there's no shortage of angles for him to pick from. I feel like this is going to emphasize his strengths. He's going to be able to do the real talk. He's going to be able to angle. He's going to be able to try to talk down a Hitman a bit. Now, will it be executed? You know what I'm saying? And will it overpower what Hitman's doing? I'm predicting it too. I can't guarantee it because there's a reason I picked Hitman this whole time too. This many people in the room. He's going to be explosive. He's an underrated angler, but borderline, if not flat out, elite angler on his own right. I just think Gotti has more topics that people are going to really look out for right now. While you might have some rehashing of some older angles from Hitman, which is going to maybe pale in comparison to some more fresh angles from Geechee. So another hard call, and that's what you want. You want a card that has battles that are hard to call, that you have to think about the style, the details. You almost want to have to overthink about it because that's the, that's the hallmark of a truly great matchup that can lead to some great footage. But, you know, after all this time, it, this mega fight, I do have Gotti coming out as the victor on Bags and Bodies.
And that is my full set of predictions here for uh, Bags and Bodies' Power Moves card, man. I'm super excited. Uh, obviously, tons of top-tier action, but even the, the one non-top-tier battle has like so much you know grudge energy in it that you know is electric in its own right there's just a lot of things to be happy about and there's really no reason especially when you look at the top four battles in this card that these don't turn out to be great they've had proper prep time they got a what looks to be a great venue kind of situation with the amount of people i think there's great energy around the event it kind of reminds me of max out three and, and how positive everyone was and excited going into the matchups hyped up and something i late i'm uh, mentioning here but i didn't mention for geechee and hitman another reason i'm going geechee two one um is hitman's throwing the event and how often do i talk about it is extremely hard to rap on the same event that you are throwing ask arsenal ask john john to don ask calico who's already guaranteed that him and swamp won't be battle of the night because he's throwing the event first time throwing an event for hitman as well so i i think he'll do better than some of them have done under that same circumstance but that's another added stress factor that could that could possibly work against him but listen man and like i said before when you have all these different reasons to call the battle either way that means that good matchups were booked but now i want to ask you guys uh in the comments down below please let me know your battle of night performance of the night your predictions what's your biggest hot take regarding the event who do you think takes the biggest loss who do you think walks away with the biggest win the biggest stock boost from the night with a card like this there's so many different things how it's going to affect years how it's going to affect possibly the cody race and the overall landscape of battle rap going into 2025 but it's been jay smo reviews again here y'all like comment subscribe i'm gonna catch you on the next one man peace